does it scare you that the ride ends? Um, no, I mean, you have to talk to me on all my levels. I'm a biological organism, so if something's thrown at my head, I'll duck and things like that. But if you're asking me, do I long to live forever? Uh, no. Um, in the Buddhist tradition, there are practices that are designed to make you aware of simultaneously the horror of mortality and the horror of immortality. The thought of living forever is actually horrific to me. Are those the only two options? You can, <laughs> you, like um, when you're sitting with a loved one or watching a movie you just really love or a book you really love, you don't want it to end. You don't necessarily always flip it to the other aspect, the, the, the complete opposite of the thought experiment. What happens if the book lasts forever? There's gotta be a middle ground, like the snooze button. Sure, you don't wanna sleep forever, but maybe press the snooze button and get an extra 15 minutes. <laughs> there's, there's surely some kind of balance. That, that fear seems to be a source of an intense appreciation of the moment, in part. I mean, that's what the Stoics talked about, to sort of the, to meditate on one's mortality. Sure. It seems to be a nice wake up call to that life is uh, full of moments that are beautiful and then you don't get an infinite number of them. Right, and the Stoic response was not the project of trying to extend the duration of your life, but to deepen those moments so they become as satisfying as possible so that when death comes, it does not strike you as any kind of calamity. Does that project ring true for your own personal feelings? I think so. Do you think about your mortality? I used to. I don't so much anymore. Um, part of it, as I'm older and your temporal horizon flips somewhere in your 30s or 40s, you don't live from your birth, you live towards your death. <laughs> That's such a beautiful phrase. The temporal horizon flips. That's so true. That's so true. At what point is that? The, 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 the point before which the the world of opportunity and possibility is infinite before you. Yeah, it's like Peter Pan. There's all these golden possibilities and you fly around between them. Yes, very much. And then when it flips, you start to look for a different model. Uh, the Socratic, the Stoic model, Buddhism has also influenced me, which is more about, wait, when I look at my desires, I seem to have two meta desires. In addition to satisfying a particular desire, I want whatever satisfies my desire to be real, and whatever is satisfying my desire to not cause internal conflict, but bring something like peace of mind. And so I more and more move towards how can I live such that those two meta desires are a constant frame within which I'm trying to satisfy my specific desires. What do you think happens after we die? I think mind and life go away completely when we die. And I think that's actually significantly important for the kind of beings that we are. Um, we are the kinds of beings that can come to that awareness and then we have a responsibility uh, to decide how we're gonna comport ourselves towards it. Can you linger on what that means, the mind goes away? Like when you're playing music and the last instrument is put down, the song is over. Doesn't mean the song wasn't beautiful. Doesn't mean the song wasn't complex. Doesn't mean the song like didn't add to the value of the universe in its existence, but it came to an end. 